Should we should we should we try? With yes. This let's way? let's go ahead and start, and I'll um, and uh, we'll we'll uh, mute everyone except for you. And, okay. Um, and then uh, when people have uh, um, questions or whatever, they can just unmute themselves. Um, yeah. And then uh, after what I'd like to do tonight is to do a relaxation, a centering, a focusing, and then we'll check in with each other like we did last time. And then I'm going to tell a story and then I want to do a meditation on the Shema. So that's, that was what I envisioned for tonight. Um, okay, so let's, let's start. And uh, I invite you to close your eyes and bring your attention again to the breath, breathing deep in the belly, inhaling from the belly to the rib cage, to the chest, and then exhaling, just letting go. This is a time to let go of stress. Deep breath. Slowing down the breath, because as we slow down the breath, we're able to move to a place of greater relaxation. So inhaling. And I invite you to exhale through the mouth. So you're making a sound like a wave in the ocean. Or you can make any other sound that helps you to release stress. Sometimes I just make loud sounds. Ah. Nobody can hear you, so you can make whatever sounds you like to release the stress. This is the time we carry so much stress. And this is our time to let go. Another very powerful breath technique is to sip the straw like you're perch the mouth like you're sipping in a straw and then hold it and then blow it out like you're blowing out the light in the candle With each breath, you allow yourself to relax, to let go, to go a little deeper inside. You can follow the breath as you inhale, the body's opening. And as you exhale, the body's letting go. And the greater you're able to let go, the greater the next breath will be. And as you inhale and experience that opening, get in touch with what you would like to be filled with. What, is, what are you yearning for? 
And as you exhale, allow that to be a release of whatever it is that you don't want. Letting go of anger, fear, letting it go and opening to what we do want, love, light, peace, whatever's true for you. So each breath is like a prayer. I'm opening. May I be open to love, light, peace. May I let go of any negativity, stress. And as we were learning last time, we don't breathe by our own will, but rather we're breathed. So as you inhale, just allow yourself to receive the breath. Realizing you are breathed. You are supported. You don't breathe by your own will, but rather you breathe by divine will. So just take a few moments for receiving the breath, relaxing as you open, letting go as you exhale. The mind begins to wander just very gently, lovingly, bring it back to the breath. Feeling the gift of breath. the gift of life. Now breathe through the nostrils. Inhaling, exhaling through the nostrils. Slowing down the breath. The fewer breaths you breathe in a minute, 
the more relaxed and more present you'll be. We'll take a few moments now just to be with ourselves. Observing from that witness place of witnessing what's happening to us physically, what's happening internally, emotionally, mentally, just practicing witness without judgment. Practicing loving and accepting yourself, whatever comes up, just be with it. We'll do this for about five minutes. Allowing the mind to quiet.
one more minute. And then return your awareness to being in this Zoom experience with other people. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And Rabbi, he just walked away for a moment. Oh, okay. All right. Um, can everybody? Can anybody? Would anybody like to share anything that they experienced during the brief uh, meditation beginning? You know what you would like to receive or um, how the silence was, five minutes of silence was for you. I can't see anybody. I only see myself. So um, I can't call on anybody, but maybe there'll be a brave soul who will be the first. The rabbi's back. Okay. The rabbi is back. Okay, rabbi. I can't see anybody to call on anybody, but perhaps would anybody, you could call on somebody or anybody would like to share for a moment? I think, I think for me, my name is Sharon, my mind went blank and really just concentrated on, on breathing. I was warm and relaxed. The five minutes felt a little long. I was wondering if anybody was still there. Um, but when you, it, when you said one more minute, it was just at the right time. Okay, right, good. Well, Sean, it's great that you got very relaxed and five minutes is a while, but sometimes it takes, it takes time for the mind to really quiet. Um, thank you for sharing, Sharon. Anybody else would like to share? I had just come from an executive committee meeting <laughs> talking about finances and every and program a little bit, but a lot of finances. And so just uh, having to de stress from that was a wonderful experience. Oh, good. Okay. I felt at peace. This is Lon Titel. I felt very, very peaceful, very relaxed, and in a very, very positive way. Um, oh. Got rid of a lot of stress. Wonderful. You know, getting rid of stress is like the first step in meditation. And so that's wonderful that that you were able to release and, and become calm. Okay, I want to I want to share the one story that I know about meditation <coughs> that um, I heard from Reb Shlomo Kalba, and I often share this story um, because it has a great teaching about meditation. It's a story about the Volker Rebbe. The Volker Rebbe was known as the silent Rebbe. 
because he never spoke. It was said that he would sit with his followers, his Hasidim, for hours without uttering a word. Hours and hours. And at the end of the sitting, he would say, Hashem Echad, God is one. The Rebbe had a disciple that lived in a nearby town and wanted the rabbi to come and meet his Rebbe. The rabbi resisted, thinking to myself, to himself, if he knew something, he would speak. He may be good for, you know, peasants, but me, I'm a great Kabbalist. Why should I go see somebody who doesn't speak? But the disciple persisted and eventually the rabbi agreed. And he came before Shabbos, Arab Shabbos, and he goes to the base medrash and he sees that the water carriers, the shoemakers, they're discussing a point in Atrium, this deep, profound Kabbalistic text, and he can follow them. He has no idea what they're talking about. They're so advanced. And he immediately is humbled. He thought he knew something, but in comparison to these simple water carriers, he knows nothing. And then it's time to, for Shabbat, and everybody davens beautifully. And then after services, people would get in line to say good Shabbos to the Rebbe. The Rebbe never spoke back, but if you were lucky, he would take your hand. So the rabbi is in line with everybody. And when it gets to be his turn, the Rebbe takes his hand. The disciple went looking afterwards. He couldn't find the rabbi. And then eventually he finds him and he's in a corner and he's crying. And he says to him, what happened when the Rebbe took your hand? And the rabbi said, I always thought that I believed in God, but it wasn't real. When the Rebbe took my hand, I know, I know God is real. I know there is one God. I love that story because it's not just about the power of a Rebbe, but it's about the power of meditation. You know, we can learn everything we can about Judaism, we can learn about God and everything on an intellectual level, but that's a big difference between the direct experience. It's like reading a book about love and having the experience of love. So meditation becomes a very powerful vehicle for that direct experience of God. And when I was teaching, I would use meditation to, as we will tonight, to experience some very basic Jewish teachings. We can learn them intellectually, but they don't really impact on us until we have that direct experience, that aha, oh, I understand. I, I experienced the depth of this. My teacher Shlomo used to say, prayer is the time when I'm addressing God, there's me, there's God, and God is the creator, the ruler, and I'm praying because he's a source of blessing. Meditation is the time 
when I'm experiencing that God is closer to me than my own breath. So I wanted to guide you in a meditation on the Shema because the Shema is something that we're saying every day, a few times a day. And it really contains the deepest teachings about Judaism, about the nature of God. And we say it all the time. And if we understand and we can say it with the proper Kavana, we might have a little taste of a revelation of the oneness of God, that God is one. And really what that means, that God can't be divided into parts, that God is one. And we are actually a part of that oneness of God. And all our prayers, all our, all our mitzvahs, everything that we're doing is devoted to making that revelation of God's oneness to come out of what has been hidden to be widely known, that everybody will know that God is one and that everyone is a part of God. So I'd like to um, do a little meditation. You know, we're going to work with the letters of the Shema at first, and then we're going to chant out the Shema, and we'll do a little meditation afterwards. So, I don't know, Rabbi, are we on mute or not mute? Uh, I think everyone's on mute except for you, and I'm going to put myself on mute. Um, okay, but, yeah, but, just, but, but, but when, anybody can when take we, themselves off of mute. Yeah, when we want to, when we, I thought that when we say chant out the Shema, we could all, we could all be unmuted. Okay, we'll do. Okay, we'll okay do. great. Okay, so. So, so actually, go let me just suggest, to... I'm, I'm going to unmute everybody, but if you have background noise, like your dishwasher's making, or your washing machine, or your dog is barking, mute yourself. Okay, uh, I understand where, where, where you're going to do with this. So I'm going to, again, unless you, if you're in a quiet place, stay unmuted, and then we can be part of the Shema. That's what you're saying, right? Right, right. Okay, so, so, uh, so let, let us go back to that experience of being with our breath going back inside, <coughs> using, using the breath as that vehicle to go inside. Rabbi, I think you should unmute everybody. You should Maybe. mute everybody. I should mute them? Yeah, because there's a background noise and hold on. Bring you. Okay. Feeling that gift of the breath again. And if you know the Hebrew letters of the Yud Hey Vav Hey, I'm going to guide you 
with the letters. And if you don't, that's okay because you're going to be aware of what those letters symbolize. But if you know the letters, visualize them on your inner screen. So you're going to like trace the letters. So there's a yud, the hey, the vav, and the final hey. And we're meditating on God surrounding us, in front of us, behind us, all around us. That we live and breathe in the midst of God. But God is not just outside of us. God is within us. So if you know the letters, we place the yud in the head, the hay in the shoulders, the arms, the vav in the torso, and the final hay in the waist and the legs. With the breath, we meditate on God being imminent within us. Within us and everything in creation. Now we're preparing to say the Shema, and we're going to do this by working with the Hebrew letters. The Shin, representing the element of fire. The Mem, representing the element of water. And we substitute the Aleph for the Ayin. Is the Shin, the Mem, and the Aleph are the mother letters. So I'm going to guide you in this, and please join me. So we visualize the letter Shin in the head. And if you don't know the letters, it's okay. We visualize the element of fire. And we're going to take a breath in and we're going to make the sound of the shin. So please join me. Inhaling. Let's do that two more times. And this is the fire, this is the fire, the consuming fire that that burns away everything that's blocking the light. So inhaling. This time, just imagine that you can, that your whole body now is immersed in holy fire. This holy fire that is going to burn away all negativity, any blocks, whatever you want to get rid of. Just release it to the fire 
of the shin. So inhaling. Let's do that one more time and really have that intention, that kavana. I can let go. I can let go of what limits me. Inhaling. And now we'll work with the mem. We place the mem in the solar plexus, blue light. And we're going to make the sound of the mem, which represents the element of water. So we're inhaling. Mm. Let's do that one more time, inhaling. Mm. Now imagine yourself in a body of water, like a mikvah. And you're immersing yourself in this experience of being in the mikvah, being in this body of water is so cleansing. Also removing whatever psychic debris that's limiting you. Let's inhale, be in the water, one more time we I'm, I'm putting myself out in a lake or an ocean the sun is shining and I'm going to immerse myself Inhaling. When we place the olive above the top of the head, about six inches, the olive, two yuds connected with the bath, connecting us to the light before creation. light created on the first day. And now we're going to say the Shema like we did the letters. And if you want, Rabbi, you can unmute everybody so we can all hear, say, hear the, us chanting the Shema together. So, so inhaling. Shema. Where are you at? 
Should we repeat that? Yes. Yeah, let's repeat it. Because this this the Shema is the call to really listen. So let's repeat it again, inhaling. Shema. Shema. So we want to quiet our minds so we can truly listen. And the next word, let's take a deep breath. Yes, <coughs> So feeling ourselves, I am a part of this community known as Israel, the community that has existed. from Sinai before will exist forever. I'm connected to all people in this community. I'm a part of it. And now we're going to say God's name for the first time, and we're going to meditate. No, they can We're going to meditate on God being transcendent, that God is greater than creation. So, inhaling. Adonai. God is greater beyond, beyond creation. And then we say, inhale. Hello, Hello. Hey. and we have this direct connection, our God, it's personal, a God we can call on. Inhaling. Adonai. And place the letters in the body. Meditating that God is imminent. God is within us, within everything in creation. And then we say the last word. From the perspective of God, there's no outside or inside. There's only God, only God. So let's say Echad again with that awareness that in the ultimate reality, God is one. Inhaling.
There's no outside, no inside. There's only God. But then we say Baruch Shem Kavot Malchuso Leolam Ro'ed because it's not our fate to stay in that oneness for too long. And we open to that there's a duality. There's God and the world. And then we say the Vihakta, we should love the Lord your God. And you can say that, and it's when you're loving God, you're loving all of creation because you're loving yourself, you're loving all of creation because God is within everything in creation. Rabbi, maybe you can put us back on mute because there's some distracting noise. So when we loving God, we're opening to receive that love. So we'll take a few moments to open to that experience of being loved unconditionally. Unconditionally. God says, I, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Unconditional love. So opening to soak in that experience. And if you want to give yourself a hug, if that helps. Open to that experience of unconditional love. We want to let go now of all of the feelings, the times when we might not have felt loved unconditionally. Just breathe it out because the deeper truth, the deeper reality is that we are loved. God created the whole world to love and to be known. So that's the truth and the deeper reality. And in the Shema, we get a little glimpse of that. I am loved unconditionally. I love myself unconditionally. I let go of any kind of judgment. I love myself unconditionally. It's a good affirmation. And if you can go back in your mind and recollect who you were in the early years of your life, perhaps that little child within you didn't feel that he or she was loved unconditionally. But you can give that message to that child part within you who still lives within you, still there, still asking for your attention, asking for your love.
giving this child love is so healing. And we go through our life, our, all our life experiences. Many times we didn't feel God's unconditional love. And as if we can go back and heal those times and say, yeah, God was there, God was loving me, I just didn't know it. We might want to call to mind one or two experiences that were challenging, but now in retrospect, we can look and say, yeah, God was protecting and guiding me, even though I didn't know it at the time. Going back to the experience of the present moment of experiencing being loved, breathing into your heart, and knowing that you can radiate this love to others. You do radiate this love to others. That's the love that you share is God's love coming through you. And this is such a time, such a time for us to share God's love with each other, to open to that experience of being loved and to share that. Frequently and as fully as possible. No point in holding back. Allow yourself to be this channel for expressing God's love through you. Calling to mind your loved ones. Telling them silently and then directly, I love you. And taking a few moments just to continue to bathe in this love and this light. Breathing, being aware. that God's love is always with you.
And then returning your awareness to your chair, taking a few moments to integrate this experience. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. You all can see each other. I can't see you. But if you can, make eye contact with each other. And Rabbi, could you unmute everybody and um, we can open the floor for some sharing or questions, comments? I, I would love to hear what anyone has to say because um, I think it's a very interesting thing that Mindy has done, combining the Shema with uh, in a very spiritual meditative technique. Anyone have anything? Be, this is a non-judgment zone. Mm -hmm. If you have something to share, please feel free to share. I thought that was very moving. I really appreciated that. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's powerful, and and we say the Shema you know, several times a day. And and there's so many deep teachings, more deep deep teachings about the Shema. But one of the last things that people say or said for them before they leave this world is the Shema. And we say it before we go to sleep, we say it in the davening, in the morning. It's um, because when we say the Shema, it's that ticket, that direct connection to the highest revelation of God. And when we understand what oneness means and we meditate, then we have the possibility of having direct glimpses of what God's oneness is. And when we have that glimpse, we're filled with joy. We're filled with bliss. We're filled with um, expanded consciousness. You know, so it's it's so wonderful that the Shema is so integral to our Jewish spiritual practice. Any other comments or questions, sharing? I'm glad to hear you enjoyed it. I mean, I think each word of the Shema is very powerful. I think it definitely uplifted my spirit, um, physically, mentally. Um, it will it put me in a place where I haven't been in a long time since all this Corona hit, and uh, I think it really relaxed me, my body, my soul, and like you just said before, it gave me. Uh, it felt almost like an ungodly connection 
you know, uh, you know, you know, at the time I was, you know, just almost uh, totally, totally relaxed. And I thank you very much for it. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, it's well said. I would agree with that. Yeah. Thank you. I feel very much at peace right now. Mm, awesome. <clears throat> when I came online for this program, I had just gotten word that my son's partner, who is a director of a assisted living and Alzheimer's um, place, got their first vi virus patient. She just, just now found out that she was positive. And so I was in a very, very down place. And this has helped amazing. Very much well, so. I appreciate, well, send I appreciate the, it. Send, send this person your <coughs> love and your light. You know, your prayers make a difference. Yeah, it, yes. your prayers make yes. a difference. You know, there there's a very good book called, um, oh, it's called Prayer is Good Medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, Larry Dossey, that's the name. And he did a lot of research, clinical studies about the power of prayer. And he discovered that the people who were prayed for did measurably better mm -hmm. than the people who were not prayed for. And neither group knew whether they were being prayed for or not. No. Yes. So if a person knows they're being prayed for, that helps lift their spirits. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they didn't know that they yeah. were being prayed for or that there was any kind of experiment going on shows that the power of prayer. So, you know, sending love and light to everybody, you know, who's ill we really want to do that at this time and particularly if we know somebody then then we have that direct opportunity to help heal this person yes. so thank you for sharing yes I sometimes think can you hear me Yes. I sometimes yes. think that the Shema is so critical to, to my understanding of what it means to be a Jew. Um, Elijah standing at the mouth of a cave, running away from the King Ahab, his wife Jezebel, and the passage says that, that all these things pass by, the wind and lightning and thunder, and I don't remember exactly what it is, but, but the text tells us that God is not any of those powerful things, but that God is either, sometimes it's, it's translated as a still small voice. Mm -hmm. I think of it more as like a whisper, you know, that, that God is whispering to us even right now. And the problem that I face and that I think so many spiritual people face is how to hear the whisper. How do, how do we hear our voice when all of this other crap is going on when we have personal anxiety and people that, that we are, and maybe people that we're concerned about um, are in June's case or the people that are dealing with in the congregation that are ill. Um, how do we hear the whisper? And I think that, that, that that's why that you know, to me, the, the first letter of the Shema, the, the Shin always means, you know, shh, be quiet. 
Shush. 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 Okay. Quiet Stop. the mind. Quiet the mind and be willing to hear that still small voice um, and that whisper of God. And it's hard to do that when everything is turned upside down like it is now. But I do feel I think that it's the most that now is the most important time to try to hear the whisper. And we have to give ourselves time. We have to turn off the news. <laughs> we have to give ourselves, I, you know, we didn't have so much time. I wanted to do, we'll do next week, we'll do something that will take, help us to hear better. But we have to turn off the news. We have to pray. And then we have to meditate. Mm -hmm. You know, if you meditate, if you do the Shema like this, and you give yourself time, you know, to listen. You know, we're all of the meditations that we're doing are ways for us to contact our soul. And our soul has wisdom that that our more limited consciousness doesn't have. So we want to contact that part of us that is wise and expanded and God connected. And we have to give ourselves time for it. Mm -hmm. It will, you know, it God wants to to guide us. Now, we have to just allow ourselves to open and and be quiet, quiet the mind so that we can hear the soul. So that gives us time, that takes a little more time, but um, this is the time. I think this is the time, this whole mm -hmm. being shut in. People, I think people are praying more. You know, you have to pray and, 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 and you want to be connected. And you know, and you have to turn off the news. I have to be just strong with myself. You can only watch a certain amount of time. You know, then you have, I can't, I can't do it. I can't, I have to give myself time. I don't want to be connected to that. I want to be connected to what's beyond. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to also extend an invitation tomorrow uh, I'm offering a free ebook of my last, one of my last books called The Secret Legacy of Biblical Women. So if you join my Facebook page, um, Melinda Ribner Spiritual Guide, um, you'll get it or you email me, I'll put you on my email list, ribner at msn.com. You know, so this is an opportunity for you get to get this book for free. And there's a lot I, out of this is my was my fifth book, and to me it has it has so much in it, and it does have meditations, some of the deepest meditations in the back of the book. So I just want to extend that invitation um, to the people in this Zoom class. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's thank you. It's really great. Yeah. And, it's an honor I love of, the way you write. In honor of Mother's Day, you know, our biblical mothers. Why don't you well before we go, why don't you give us just some one little taste of what what should be in our heads for Mother's Day? In your mind. Oh, I use for Mother's Day, I I I did a I did a piece. Um, that came out today on Mother's Day. It was wonderful. Um, because, you know, what we realize, the, how important the mother is. You know, the, the mother is, she, 
we were a part of her and and we're always you know who she was had a great impact in us and um so you know god didn't have to do this to have a mother and a father but this was this is the way to divine wisdom so to feel a lot of gratitude and if your mother's alive to express that to her and if she's not to to send your love to her in her heavenly place uh, you know, mother could also be alive and and not really with it too so is even an in between status i think what, what do you mean if somebody has like dementia yeah yeah unfortunately i just went through that and one of my closest friends has been going through that many years with her mom but you know the, the dementia is only on one level the soul is is doesn't isn't demented mm -hmm. yeah so talking to the soul loving expressing love to the soul even if she doesn't she doesn't understand it or or even know who you are uh, mentally but on a deeper level the soul knows mm -hmm. yeah so i want to end up my friends tonight um let's see if i can find it um There, um, I don't know if, who was uh, on when I announced that apparently today, I just found out about it. Um, here it is, okay. 